good news, Glenn. I'm here with County Manager, Mr. Bill Fallon, and we are thrilled to have you. Uh, so let's jump right in. Let's get, get started. This is the month of June, and uh, June is an interesting month because it's the beginning of summer. Um, lots to talk about here. Um, so we're going to kind of cover three different areas. Um, and so let's jump into it. Uh, beach goers. I know we've talked about this before. June and beginning of season is, is beach season. And let's talk about beach safety. What does the county do uh, really to get ready for beach goers and beach season? Yeah. Uh, good, to, good to see you again, uh, Avery. Thanks for yeah. having me on. It's, it's, it's hard to believe it's another month has gone by. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, as we talked about last, as we talked a little bit about it last uh, last time, but um, yes, beach season is among us. Um, there are a lot of uh, different kind of safety protocols that we put in place to uh, to try and make the uh, the beach experience for everybody as, as safe as possible. Uh, this year, I think uh, what we had talked about previously, this year is good because we have enough lifeguards. And in, in previous years, number one, we haven't had uh, enough lifeguards, but this year uh, we're full, and so we have lifeguards that uh, full rotation. So we're so we're good there at both the uh, at both the beach and uh, at our pools as well. Uh, so that's step one. Uh, we also have uh, in in previous years, the last couple of years, we've been haven't had as many um, uh, patrols by the police department out there. But now we have uh, the, the uh, police department's been great about uh, getting people out there and patrols, particularly on the weekends particularly on the uh, uh, at the uh, last last weekend uh, Memorial Day weekend when we had uh, quite a few people out there um, but uh, those are a couple of things that we uh, that we have going on we also have the uh, the Glen County PD now has the bike patrols and so they're out there as well so those are a couple of things uh, I do want to mention though the Sunday before Memorial Day we had a tragic event and it was uh, very unfortunate that we lost uh, lost a gentleman uh, there uh, at uh, Massingale Beach uh, one thing I did want to mention, though, was that uh, that person actually, he was out in the water, uh, based, and this is based on reports that I've heard from, from people and, and from his family as well uh, and from our staff, uh, but he had some kind of medical emergency. And so he had some kids that were out there with him. They did a fantastic job. We're talking about kids that are 10, 11, 12 years old that really helped him, uh, helped him, uh, family helped him get out of the water. The, the lifeguard was able to uh, help him get out of the water as well, and then they worked on him. So, but unfortunately, uh, we lost that person um, uh, that Sunday before Memorial Day. Memorial Day, we then uh, had some additional patrols out there as well. Uh, we knew Memorial Day was going to be a busy day. So one of the things that we did was we added uh, an EMT at uh, both Massingale and at Coast Guard Beach. So that was a little bit of an added safety measure. But again, we had the, uh, we had the lifeguards out there. We had the beach uh, patrols by the police department. And uh, we're going to continue that all summer. And so hopefully that works. Uh, signage is, is good. Uh, out there, the the new signs that we have that uh, have been in place for about a year now, those electronic signs, those boards that are out there, they tell the uh, condition of the water. And so if it's it's red, yellow, green. So if it's red, make sure you're not going in the water. If it's green, have fun. Uh, but if it's yellow, you got to be cautious in the water as well. And the lifeguards will help you help you there. So our lifeguards will be on on on, uh, on the beach uh, from, and they're actually between uh, Massingale and Coast Guard Beach. They have nine lifeguard stands between those two points. And so and then they have a couple of rovers that kind of go back and forth. So um, they're going to be out there until till uh, Labor Day. And so uh, they'll be out there to uh, to help make sure that uh, we keep the beach safe. Sounds good. Yes. Um, thank you for sharing all that information with us. We're so sorry about that man that was um, lost on on that weekend. Uh, but it does sound like you've got some good things in place. Let's talk just a minute. You mentioned these signs, the, I guess, digital signs that come up green, red, whatever, to warn you about the, the condition of the water. Talk a little bit more about that. We did a show years ago. It's probably been, I feel like it's been 10 years now, um, but there were flags. The, the thing then was, was flags, and you looked for a certain color flag. It meant whether it's okay to go in or riptides or whatever, but you're saying now it's a, it's, it's a, digital sign so that's what we should look for yes and you can't miss them as soon as you go on to uh, coast guard beach or massingale they're right there they're okay. right in front of you we hopefully you know, can can purchase more for some of the additional uh, access points that we have but uh, but yeah they're red yellow green and so they're uh, hooked up with um, uh, our emergency management and our and our recs in the park uh, department they they uh, check those as well as our our fire department and so I was out there that I, I was out there Memorial Day a couple times checked on it. it was pretty much green the entire time we did have 
last week we had some uh, conditions where the water was a little rough, so I think it got up to yellow. And so there was some caution uh, out there uh, just based on potential for riptides and just the, uh, the strength of the current. Right. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're ready for the season. Everybody's in place. You've got plenty of lifeguards. So we're, we're off and running. <laughs> right. um, so, so part of summer, well, part of, I guess, all the time is um, vehicles. We talked about vehicles and uh, bike patrols. You mentioned that. Um, some of the vehicles that we see so many of these days are golf carts. Yeah. Can you talk about any special rules or things we should be aware of um, for the golf carts? Yeah, so there's, you know, there's there's a little there's a couple of different things here. So first of all, golf carts are broken down. So there are some out there that have the license plates on them. They they're actually low speed vehicles, so they can be on roads up to 35 mile an hour. Um, but the, the majority of the golf carts that we see out there, they're actually called personal transportation vehicles, PTVs. Uh, that's just a class classification, but they're golf carts. Um, but they cannot be on roads that are over 25 miles an hour. And so we see that. We see it throughout the island. We see it uh, on some of those roads out there where it's where it's pretty dangerous. So uh, I know Memorial Day weekend, our, our police department was out in force and they were writing tickets. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that we have to do it, but we have to. Um, and so we're trying to work with some of the rental companies as well to make sure that the, the people that rent from them are aware of the rules. We have maps. Uh, we have different things that we'll post. Uh, we try and get the word out as much as possible. Uh, we have signage that's out there on the streets now over on St. Simons Island just to make sure that um, you know, people don't go on the roads. And really, it comes down to safety. So we see, ki we see kids driving these things. You have to, be a, you have, to have a license, uh, driver's license to be able to operate one. Uh, we see people that have their kids not strapped in, you know, kind of holding them on their laps. And, you know, that is that is dangerous. And particularly if they start going on roads that are 35 and 45 miles an hour, uh, that becomes a, a very much a safety hazard. Right. Absolutely. Um, I feel like we should either all be in golf carts or nobody. Being, you know, it's like it's hard, I think, to to combine the the safety of the, the vehicles on the road with the uh, golf carts versus bikes i mean it's just it's hard <laughs> yeah you know you know around the village area it's all 25 mile an hour it's, it's fine the the golf carts have no problem they don't really you know stop traffic there they don't um, you know they don't really cause many safety issues other than what i mentioned before when you have underage uh, kids driving them or, or kids that are not uh, secure inside them um, but for the most part, the other thing is, too, I mean, they just got to be um, the people that drive them have just, you know, they have to be considerate. And if there's a line of traffic behind them, even if they're on a 25 mile an hour road, pull over and let the traffic go by. And that's what we're, that's the kind of the message that we're trying to get out there. Right. Right. And I like your idea of um, maybe the, the companies who are renting these golf carts out to everybody can should be responsible for making them aware of the, the safety rules and what to do and what not to do. So. Right. Yes. Okay. Let's move on to um, hurricane season. So, so June is the beginning of hurricane season. So, talk about that a little bit. I know you've got lots of things in place. We're going to talk to EMA. We're going to talk to Public Works. Um, all play a role. So, talk about that. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, it, it, hurricane season is here. So, it's, it starts June one. We don't typically think that, but. Um, you know, we think of the fall, but uh, we've seen hurricanes in August. We've seen or tropical storms or, or you know, storms uh, in August. And, and lately, the last couple of years, we've seen them go into uh, kind of into November, which hadn't been the case in the past. And so you're going to hear from uh, Andy Lanza, who is our director of emergency management. And he's going to give you a little bit more details, uh, a little bit a better brief on really what to look for and what the season is looking like. Uh, but as far as emergency management goes uh, and preparing for, we'll just talk storms because emergency management does much more than just the uh, storms, but the storms are the big thing here uh, that we have to deal with. But as far as preparing, they do a fantastic job putting all our plans together um, and making sure that we're, we're prepared. They do all kinds of drills. They have uh, some public uh, groups that they're actually doing some training with. So it's called the CERT program. So I'll let him explain that as well. Um, but just getting ready for storms, there's a lot that actually goes on that people don't realize. And so one of the things that we do, Public Works, for instance, we have known hotspots that flood. And so Public Works, if we know a storm, a storm is coming in, they'll actually get out there uh, the week prior and just start clearing some of those ditches, making sure the pipes are clean, that type of stuff, just to make sure that we're as prepared as we can be for any potential flooding that might uh, come along with the storm. And so we've seen them. We've seen them here in the past. 
uh, Hurricane uh, Matthew and Irma. And then we had a Dahlia last year. Uh, we were fortunate to get uh, FEMA uh, reimbursement. We got, uh, I think, over $500,000 in FEMA reimbursement for uh, debris pickup last year from that storm. And so, you know, th that's that's all goes, a lot of it goes into planning. But the other th big thing is really operating during the storm. And that's where we come together as a community. So that's where all our partners, everybody across the board comes in. We have um, we actually have a training room over at the police department now that we use as an emergency operations center. Uh, but everybody comes in, we get together, we plan, but then we operate through the storm. And then I think the biggest part really is that reconstitution. So if we ever do have to evacuate, or if we, even if we don't evacuate, there's all kinds of work that goes into getting the roads ready, um, making sure that uh, the roads are, are safe for people to drive on, making sure that businesses are able to open that type of stuff. Um, but that's, you know, that's kind of what, what we think about when we think about uh, emergency management hurricane season. Uh, we do have our emergency operations center, which uh, is coming online here uh, in the next couple of years, which is actually going to be a real emergency operations center. So we can actually do real operations and, and, and use it for planning, but then uh, for reconstitution as well. Uh, and so that's a SPLOS project. And so that's going to be hurricane uh, rated. So we're actually able to, you know, be able to be safe and, and, and operate during a, a hurricane or, or a tropical storm. And then the other thing is too, it helps us with uh, our FEMA reimbursements. So we meet all the FEMA standards for uh, emergency operations center. And so that's that's really something that we're looking forward to. We're on the coast, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're prone to, to big storms. And so we got to make sure that we're uh, equipped and prepared to, to deal with those storms. Yes, that's good to know. I've not um, heard that. That's a great project coming up and, and so needed and that will be fantastic. So um, good to know. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great introduction to this uh, show for June. And like I said, we're going to move on to um, emergency management and public works. Um, so thank I you. have one thing, I have one plug for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's, the, it's the summer, right? And so one of the things that Glen County is doing this year, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I've been wanting to do for a long time, actually. Yes. Um, but we got uh, the county uh, working with the rec department, working with a bunch of volunteers. We actually have a program started this summer called Friday Night Hoops, and it's going to be Friday nights in June and July. So the four uh, Fridays in June, beginning this uh, Friday, June 7th, um, and then uh, throughout July. We're not going to go July 5th uh, because of the holiday weekend, but seven nights uh, this summer from 6 to 10 at the uh, Glen Academy Annex. We're going to have a program that's going to be free for boys and girls. They're going to be rising 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th graders. And it's going to be really an open gym concept. We're going to do some drills, have some fun, uh, have some food and drinks for them. Uh, but it really, to and we have a lot of sponsors. So the Chamber was great. The Chamber of Commerce here uh, was able to put out a, uh, a call for sponsorships. And so we got a ton of sponsors already that are lined up to help us uh, to be able to give these kids, you know, food, drinks, but also... You know, some of them you know might need some some basketball shoes or might need uh, shorts or, or whatever. And so this is really a program for the county to be able to give back. And uh, but also, really, what we're we're targeting here is just to really give these kids an opportunity to have something else to do, some kind of other option uh, for Friday nights over the summer. So we're really looking forward to it. The Board of Education was fantastic, uh, helping us uh, land uh, Glen Academy, the annex gym that's back there. So. It's going to be a, a great program, and we're hoping that we can get the word out and we get a lot of kids signed up um, and come on out Friday nights and, and have some fun. So that's great. That's awesome. What a, what a wonderful summer program. So instead of Friday night lights, it's Friday night yep. hoops. You got it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. We'll, we're excited to share that news on the show. All right. Well, thank you very much. And, yeah, you're uh, you're going to have uh, Danny. Uh, Danny Smith is our uh, director of uh, Public Works. He's been here uh, just about a year now, but fantastic. Really has done a great job coming in and uh, doing some great things with Public Works. One of the things that he does with Public Works, particularly on the drainage issues, like I mentioned, even uh, for storms, but he's putting together a maintenance program where he actually uh, goes out and does some preventative maintenance on, on our ditches and on our pipes just to make sure that we can control as much flooding as possible, in addition to everything else he's doing. So you're, you're uh, you're going to be able to meet him uh, here. And then also you're going to be able to talk to Andy Lanza, who I mentioned before, who's been here for about two and a half years. And it's really uh, between him and his deputy, Sharon Corson, they've really turned things around as far as emergency management goes here. And they're passionate and you'll hear it from them. Uh, but we're lucky to have them. We're lucky to have Danny. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're going to be able to, to talk to uh, some of our other staff as well. Yes, we look forward to that. We're very excited and it's perfect timing with the beginning of summer. 
um, in June. So thank you so much. We're thrilled to see you and we'll see you again next time. All right. See you next month. Okay. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Good News Glenn. We're here with Andy Lianza. He is Glenn County Emergency Management uh, Director and Homeland Security Agency. So it's it's a it's a lot of words, but really we just shorten that to EMA, right? Yeah, that that'll work. EMA. Okay. Everybody knows what that is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, you are such an important department. So many things going on. But um, one of the things we want to touch on today, since it's going to be the month of June, um, is the beginning of hurricane season. So uh, let's let's jump into that. Yeah, this is our busy time. A lot, a lot of people know EMA is the uh, hurricane agency. That's where you'll really see us a lot. But of course, we do a lot more than that. But it's June 1st through November 30th is hurricane season. And boy, do we have a hurricane season predicted this year. Do we have that's let's talk about that first and foremost is are we going to have a lot of hurricanes this year? Uh, they're predicting a very active season due to the combination of uh, tide cycles, uh, La Nina coming in and um, the ocean heat uh, index right now. So it's it, it's it's right for some. It doesn't mean we're, we're the ones that are going to get hit, but there is going to be a lot of activity from what we're seeing. Wow. Ooh. OK, so, well, on that note, um, your department, you get ready all year long. You do training. Um, responses, all kinds of things, trying to get everybody organized, but also um, affiliated with what to do. So um, tell us some of your top tips for preparation for our area. Um, it's it's actually pretty simple. So there's there's three main things that somebody can do is, is, is make a plan. Um, and, you know, Failure to plan is preparing to fail. You've heard those kind of sayings, you know, you, you see them on memes on the internet, but it's true. I mean, you know, uh, a simple, uh, any plan is better than no plan, right? Because you got to know what to do and this, this thing's barreling down at you. The other thing that we want people to do is build a kit because it's inevitable if you have a plan, you're going to need some kind of kit. You know, think about things like your medications. What, what does your pet need? Um, uh, do you have your critical documents that you might have to take with you if you were to evacuate? Um, do you have a way to get water if, if water gets shut down or power? Do you have a weather radio? And then, yeah, I was speaking of weather radio, stay informed. How do we stay informed? Um, you know, we have several ways that we reach out. We have everything from our Facebook site, which is the Glen County EMA website. So uh, on Facebook, we have uh, glencounty.org forward slash EMA, and we even have a radio station. At, at this point that we'll go live on. So with all these alerts, you also have code red that people can sign up for too on our website. And that's a emergency alerting system. It's pinned on our Facebook. So if you go to our, our Facebook, that'll be one of the first posts that you see. And that's how you'll receive your emergency alerts about evacuations, road closures, and uh, weather in your area. So pretty simple. Yeah, no, that sounds great. On the um the code red emergency alerts, would you, which when you sign up, does it come through on your phone or how do, how do you, how are you alerted? You get to choose. That's the great thing about it. You can sign up and you can choose a text message, email, or a phone call. Okay. And you can actually specifically uh, choose the alerts that you want. So that's, what's really neat. If you don't want the weather and you're not worried about it, if you just want the stuff that we push, uh, you can choose to receive that. And if you download the app, what's really neat is you download the app and sign up any other county in, in the in the country that has code red. If you happen to be there, you'll get their alerts while you're there because it's geolocated. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, all these new technologies are, are supposed to make it faster and easier for us to receive the information. So that's great. That's great. Um, we have a lot of dog that just snuck in, everybody, our, our PIO. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Morning. Hi. All right. <laughs> Sorry, off. Yeah. Sorry so to interrupt. New inter yeah, I, you're not interrupting, but it's a new uh, new member of our team, the our PIO. So we have somebody specifically. Hello to. Oh. This, you're on a news interview. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, Lawton is he's a great addition to our team. He's uh, he's here with us, and when we activate. You know, part of the problem, uh, we go live, we have uh, the website, we have a damage uh, storm surge viewer. We put all this stuff up and, you know, our, our troops are staged, so to speak. We got the agreements, we got uh, people all over the county and we need people like uh, 
him and Katie out there to put out the news of what's going on. So we leverage our Facebook site and our, our live storm uh, damage viewer that you can see. So as long as there's internet, um, you can actually go to glencounty.org forward slash EMA and see where the trees are down and what roads are closed and what's floated, flooded. And we'll put down uh, even pictures too. So people really know what's going on. We try to be very transparent and up to the, up to the moment when the storm uh, hits. That's great. Yes. It sounds like y'all are very prepared and um, that's, that's awesome. And the PIOs are so important um, in, in addition to everything that you, you do. So it's a good, good team. Um, yeah. Let's talk about back to the plans. You were saying make a plan. Um, also get a kit. So you need a plan and a kit. Talk about um, uh, in evacuation routes and things like that. Um, the elderly, also pets. I mean, what what do you recommend for pets? I know that's a big concern for so many people. Um, so in my plan, I have I have dogs and cats. So you got to think about we do so we do presentations if somebody would ever want us to come to your organization we do a build a kit presentation we do a hurricane prepared a preparedness presentation and we do a general what is emergency management we're actually about to offer uh one to county businesses as well so you know planning so for my pet some of the stuff i keep i'm going to have to have a carrier because if i end up going to a shelter for example for some reason um you're going that's going to be one of the things that's going to be required I have Frenchies and they're allergic to tap water, as they say, you know, you see these, I mean, not really, but I have very specific dietary needs that I got to keep for them, their medications. And then my cats, uh, think about this cat litter. If everybody's evacuating to the same place, you know, you got to consider that as well. Um, that's actually something that's typically overlooked at the cat litter um, when you get there. So yeah. medications, uh, a way to, uh, keep your medications cool if they're required, you know, so a cooler is obviously something that's part of my kit that I, it actually holds other things while I'm not using it. So, and then as far as evacuation, when people sign up for the uh, code red alerts and whatnot, that's where we share all that information. Okay. So okay. We, we can push, uh, you know, so many characters okay. to the text, but if we we'll send you an email about things that you should consider on your route, because if you go to evacuate, you got to remember a, a two hour trip can turn into a six hour trip if you're late. Hmm. Um, so that's something, and you don't have to wait for us to tell you to evacuate. If we do see a storm coming in and it, and as Sharon, as our deputy director, she always says, maybe you want to take a trip to see aunt Sally somewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that's a good point. I think people do wait. They're, they're waiting for, well, are we going to, do we have to evacuate? Is it mandatory? But you're saying, yeah. Hey, you know, might be a good time to go visit aunt Sally. Like just leave whenever you're comfortable. You don't have to wait. That's right. I mean, you know, there's there's preparations that you might want to take to your house. You might want to shut off your gas and your water. Uh, that way you don't have a mess when you come back. But, you know, if you if you go ahead and you get out of town, worst case scenario, you come back, everything's fine. I mean, not a big deal, right? right. I mean, we but we never know where these things are going. They call it the cone of uncertainty when you're looking at the track. They call it the, the cone of uncertainty for a reason because it's, it's only right two thirds of the time. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Lot, lot to think about. Um, yeah. And, and the other thing along those lines is what do you take with you? I mean, obviously your pets, whatever, is there something else besides your, your emergency kit, of course, but like anything you should be taking with you, uh, from your house, I guess that, that would be important to remember. So we, we do a really, like I said, this presentation called build a kit. We, we, we go kind of out there. We, we talk about, we have graphics for people taking plants with them, overloading their cars. I mean, you got to think what's practical. Um, you know, this, all this stuff is, um, you know, so I keep like my marriage certificate, my birth certificate. That's the kind of stuff I'm taking with me. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, and a cash is one of the things that, you know, what if the power's out on your, on your route as well. So, it's kind of the common common sense items. I keep mine in a big bin that they set those with the yellow top. You see them at Home Depot and Sam's and all the time. That's that's my kit. It has has the stuff that I need copies. Um, you know, how do you charge your phone when you have no power? So we have solar little solar charging blocks that we keep. Um, we even do that here at the office. We have ways to get solar power. But uh, things that, you know, you wouldn't be able to play, like if you have a prescription, do you have a, do you have a, a hard copy of it anymore? Do you have a hard copy? Do you have a phone list that you actually keep? If you don't have your phone, do you know your uh, relative's phone number? That's, that's what we're running into now. 
So, you know, and I don't go crazy with the survival food. I just keep the common sense kind of things. I know I'm going to be uncomfortable for so many days, um, but you just don't want to wait till last minute because uh, if you do get to some of these shelters, it's not like it's a five star hotel. It's more of a it's like a, you got to think of it as a life raft. So that's why we, we tell people if there's any way that you can make a plan to go see somebody now. Um, Red Cross does a great job. They do everything they can. There's a lot of good volunteers. We do a lot of planning with them, but you know, it's very basic. You're going to be sleeping on a cot. You'll have a blanket and a little pillow. That's probably too flat for most people, you know? So, uh, you know, if you have a special pillow or something that you need, if, if you have a CPAP machine, those, those are all the kind of things we ask for people to consider. Right. You know, that's helpful information. So go ahead and think about these things now, make a plan sort of on the front end. So you're not stuck and panicked at the last minute. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, let's see. We talked about code. Oh, weather radios. Those are um, those are important. Talk, talk about that. I mean, is that something everybody should have is a weather radio. Yeah. So, you know, we're a very reliant society on technology, as you you know, as you know. Um, yeah. And we, if the cell phones go down, though, right, or we lose power, how are you going to get this information? Um, the weather radio is on is broadcasting all the time we have um and they're as low as i think 20 something dollars now up to you know whatever you want to spend basically um we have solar powered ones that we can stick in our window um but to really get those alerts uh if you have a weather radio you just keep a nine volt battery in it you know living on the coast i change mine at the beginning of hurricane season so i have one even the ema director and the deputy director we all have a weather radio in our house um, because like I said, you don't, you don't know that you're going to have that cell phone service, but you always have that radio signal because it's that old school long antenna that you yeah. just pull up that we're used to growing up and seeing. So, right. you know, revert back to some of those, those things. It's not so cell driven. Um, and that's why we always recommend an emergency management of weather radio because every kind of message can be pushed, pushed to that thing, not just the, the talk radio, but if we, if the County needs to send out something in coordination with the national weather service, we can even put it out on that. Hmm. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. I know it's something I remember my grandfather had, you know, it was kind of cool. Like, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, we don't think about it today, but what a great idea to go ahead and get it only $20, make that part of your plan, um, is include that weather radio and make sure you change the batteries because, uh, no, no good to, <laughs> to have a radio yeah. without a, a fresh battery. So, um, yes. Okay. Well, this has been great information. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Um, no, just uh, like I said, if, you, if anybody wants us to ever come out and speak to an organization, business, um, you know, community, maybe even we do neighborhoods all the time. I mean, we talk about hurricane preparedness. We have several presentations. We'd love to come out and uh, help educate. And, you know, we learn things from folks too. So we also have this uh, new program that we that we started this year. It's called the CERT program. So a motorcycle just went by, but um, we, it's community emergency response team, and um, it's a it's a seven week course. We meet once a week on on a Monday right now, and um, we meet Mondays for seven weeks, and we have a, a we train everybody on disaster the basics of disaster preparedness to be able to help themselves and their neighbor. And then after you complete that course, if you want to become a volunteer with us and actually join our team, um, we have that program going on as well. So follow our Facebook and, and the county website for information on that. Uh, we're doing three classes this year, and every time we open one up, it's full within about a week. So we might even move to four. And what's really neat is we give away these cool kits. Let me show you. Hang on. I got one right here. Okay. We got these cool kits that you get once you complete the training. And it comes with your basic supply kit. So this will get uh, a lot of people started in preparedness. Oh. All the items they get with that. So we give everything from uh, first aid kits to um, utility shut off wrench. And we teach everybody how to use them. So it's a really neat program. These kits were grant funded. So, it, I mean, it was wonderful to have that blessing to get these kits to give out to the community. But we got 300 in the initial uh, funding for it. So but we're going to go past that because the amount of interest in this program has been just wonderful. So that's great. I'm doing our strip team. Yes, yes, yes. Great news. Great thing to be a part of. You said every Monday you meet once a week. Yeah, right now. So this class is full. So we did one in uh, on the mainland. We're doing one on the island now and we're going to do one on Jekyll. And then we're probably going to end up doing another one back on the mainland. We'll probably have to run them two at a time. 
because we've just had so much interest and it's so great to get this information out. So you can become an EMA ambassador, if anything. Oh, okay, cool. So great. Well, this has been great information and um, you're doing a great job and uh, love how all these departments are working together and um, part of a wonderful team here at Glenn County. So um, thank you so much. And we'll, we look forward to seeing you again next time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, welcome to Gold Miles TV. This is Good News Glenn. We are here with Danny Smith and he is uh, head of public works for Glenn County. Uh, welcome. Good morning and thank you for having me. Good morning. This is great. Great to be here on this beautiful sunny morning and um, there's a lot to talk about because hurricane season is coming up and we have to get to all that. But first, tell us about you and your background um, and and how you got to be in your position. Okay. Um, and again, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here uh, this morning. Yes. I, uh, so I've been with the county for uh, 10 months now. Um, I've worked in public works for approximately 20 years. Um, my career has been spent in local government in both natural resources and public works. I grew up and spent most of my time on the West coast of Florida. Uh, so kind of the, the, the mirror image of what we have here, complete with barrier islands and um, rural parts of the county. And um, after that, I spent a little bit of time in Colorado. I worked, lived and worked in the Denver metro area. Um, just one of those things we, we wanted to experience living out west. And, and I think we, we did that. And then my wife and my family, we decided it was time to come back to the southeast. And uh, here we are in beautiful Glen County. And we really, really like it here. And Hopefully we can make this our home and, and make this a career. Excellent. Well, we're glad to have you. It sounds like you've been um, have some great experience and, and come kind of ready to go. So um, yes. we're so happy about that. We heard great things from um, Mr. Fallon about you. And so we're, we're thrilled. He's got a great team together. And I know you're a big part of that, especially as we head into hurricane season. Uh, it's June, the month of June. And we want to talk about that. So, Tell us how you prepare first, how you prepare, and then maybe you can, we'll ease into how we should prepare. But um, first, what is your department doing to prepare Glen County for hurricane season? Sure. In public works, we like to think that we're preparing for hurricane season year round. Um, we like to think that that's something we do daily in our routine maintenance of county assets, specifically stormwater assets and some of the um, right-of-way vegetation that we manage. With that being said, you know, when you when you have hurricanes approaching, there are a few things you do different. Um, we have some hot spots for drainage, some, some choke points, um, and we, we try to pay special attention to those and make sure that they're clear and open so that uh, stormwater generated by hurricanes can flow freely to the outfalls and, and uh, not cause flooding impacts to our, our residents. Um, stormwater drainage, stormwater maintenance is something that, that we do focus on every single day. And it's something that takes constant maintenance to ensure those assets are working as they were designed and constructed. Right, so yeah, so um, constant maintenance, really regular maintenance year right. round, sounds like maybe the key so that you're prepared when when it is time and, and i believe that is the key and 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 with that being said it sounds so simple right it sounds yeah. like well we do that that solves all the problems so right uh, and and that and and truly it does the um, you know but it takes being proactive active and making sure that you're working towards that goal and working towards balancing that with all of the other needs um, throughout the county and, and to kind of go back and answer your question a little bit, public works, um, you know, we, we, we do more than stormwater maintenance. You know, we take care of um, all of the vehicles and equipment that the county owns. And that is a big component of hurricane prep as well. You know, we got to make sure that, that all of our needed equipment, both in public works and other departments, is, is functioning and ready to respond. Um, we take care of facilities in public works, so all of the county buildings. So we have to work constantly. And as we approach hurricane season, um, working on securing those buildings to 
ensure that they will withstand any kind of impacts from a, a tropical storm. Um, you know, and, and trees coming down, making sure that, that everything is uh, ready to go for that. That's a big part of our response is clearing roadways. So Yeah, I was going to ask you about trees. You know, people around here with the, the big oak trees, but also just trees in general, everybody is trying to preserve the trees. And um, anyway, I know that's not completely your department, but anyway, trees come down and they have to be cleared for roadways and for traffic. So tell us about that. Is this part of storm prep really is what you're saying that's actually part of it well it is and having the um the a plan to um to go out and address those down trees um, and having the equipment to go along with that plan so that we can respond quickly and ensure that residents and emergency responders first responders can get to where they need to that's the that's the the crux of it when it comes to roadways being open and and of course we want to we want things to return to normal as quickly as possible, um, both as government employees and as citizens of Glen County for citizens of Glen County. You know, um, if, if people aren't able to, to, to get to work, kids aren't able to get to school, um, you know, it, it kind of throws a wrench in things. And, and we want to be able to respond and um, have that return to normalcy as quickly as possible. With that being said, uh, the other uh, role that we play is in the event a tropical storm generates enough debris to qualify for a FEMA event, um, Public Works handles working with a, a county selected debris removal contractor, which we have pre-approved, and a county selected debris monitor, both of which are required by FEMA for reimbursement. So, um, and again, everybody wants that return to normalcy. Everybody wants to pick up that debris as quickly as possible as do we but in order to qualify for fema reimbursement there is a process that we have to go to and follow the fema protocols strictly in order to be eligible uh, for the county to be reimbursed and and for the you know that federal program that federal funding to ease the burden on our county taxpayers yes so um this is such an informative interview because when you think about public works, I think about some people think about storm drainage and maybe that's it, but there's a lot that goes into, like you said, maintaining equipment to make sure the equipment is ready, not only year round, but when there is a hurricane or any type of weather event or emergency, um, uh, we call you, you know, the heavy lifter really in this scenario, because not only that, then when the, the whole, paperwork and everything getting ready to um, work, you know, make sure you're in line with FEMA is extremely important. I don't think people understand how important that is because that gives you the funding you need to, to do your job really in, in these kind of situations. And that's right. And it is, it is extremely important. And um, what the, what everybody has to understand is it's uh, it is very um arduous from a, uh, a detail standpoint, making sure that all of your, your I's are dotted, your T's are crossed. I mean, um, the working to within that fed, those federal guidelines, uh, it's very strict in order to qualify and, and be eligible. And, and that's something that we have to, to focus on, pay attention to. And, and we can't, there's a process that we have to follow. And sometimes that process is, um, doesn't make sense. Sometimes it seems like there is a better way and there might be, but uh, to qualify for those federal dollars, we have to do it their way. Um, one thing that you had mentioned was, and I like to jokingly uh, tell my colleagues is that nobody's going anywhere without public works. You know, we maintain roads, we maintain vehicles, we maintain buildings. So, but with that being said, we are a support service to our, um, public safety groups. We are a support service to the rest of the county and we're fine working in the background. That's most of us prefer not to be in the limelight and out front. We're, we're fine just making things happen. Right. Absolutely. Yes. But sometimes it's nice to shed a little light on the people that do work in the background and how important their job is. Um, so, okay. With that being said, let's talk about mosquitoes uh, in this <laughs> area. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fun little little topic, but um, in this area, especially this time of year, 
that's really important. Are you the ones responsible for the truck going by at nine, 9 p.m. spraying? <laughs> well, indirectly we are. So um, Glen County, Glen County's mosquito control program is contracted through a vendor and that um, we contract 100% of the program and we work closely with that vendor to ensure that we are providing the uh, correct mosquito control throughout the county which includes a larvicide application primarily, and then they do some adulticide applications. Both, um, we've seen those trucks, everybody has out uh, applying the, uh, the pesticide, and that's what it is, it's a pesticide to combat mosquitoes. Uh, we, that Vector Disease Control International is the name of the company, and they are a nationwide company, and they've actually been Glen County's company for quite some time. Um, but aerial spraying happens once in a while um and um, you know they it's not just a go out and spray program um, they do a lot of monitoring a lot of testing for mosquito species what species are present we test regularly to see if there's any of the mosquito-borne diseases that are out there to ensure that we are uh, on top of that and it's not something that there's an outbreak you know we're we're able to through our contractor through the vendor um stay on top of both populations and know what those mosquitoes are, are doing. Yes. Yes. Um, is there a certain time that those trucks might spray? It's, it's generally at night. Um, and it's, uh, you know, anytime from about dusk through, uh, nine, 10 o'clock at night is when the, that's the ideal time to spray. Mm -hmm. That's typically when, um, those mosquitoes are out. So those trucks, when they're applying that, that product are going to have the best opportunity to contact those mosquitoes. So, so they're trying to spray at the same time mosquitoes are active. That's what the, the plan is. It's also at night to get the wind dies down a little bit. So there's better environmental conditions and, and they do have to work within strict environmental conditions, wind, um, and, uh, moisture in the air. You know, they monitor all that to ensure that not only are they in compliance, but that we're getting the best treatment possible through the action. More bang for our buck is what we're looking for. Right, right. Absolutely. Well, this has been great information. Is there anything else you want to touch on or talk about before we move on? Uh, the only thing I did want to mention since we're talking about hurricane season and we touched on debris, when it comes to... Um, you know, every storm is different. That's kind of a cliche. And the, the debris needs and response following every storm are a little different. We have two kinds of debris and 90% of the time we're going to be removing vegetation. So down trees, um, down limbs. Um, there is, hopefully we don't get to this point, but in really catastrophic events, uh, construction and demolition or white debris is going to be picked up. Um, that's not something we did last year after Idalia. Thank goodness we didn't have that kind of damage. But um, after a storm, we encourage everybody to pay attention to the messaging that we provide because we're going to let citizens know you can put this type of debris out and this type or just this type. Because um, if that debris gets commingled, it's it, uh, it's not qualified, doesn't qualify for reimbursement and um, makes it very difficult and slows the response. So. Um, just as we as we work through hurricane season, and, and hopefully it will be a uh, calm season for us here in Glen County. Um, just we'll be constantly putting out messaging and pro providing information. Great. So um, if people wanted to learn more about you or your department or hurricane preparedness as it relates to debris pickup or whatever, um, where should they go? Just glencounty.org and then to, to public works department? Yes, glencounty.org to our website is a great place. Um, and if, if if there are interested citizens, folks that, that really want to, to delve deep into public works, um, you know, I have a passion for what I do. Um, I have a passion for providing service in local government. And it's something that uh, I've tried to get away from a few times, but I really, you know, it, it's something I enjoy and am filled by. So that's a that's my way of saying give us a call. We'll give you a tour. We'll talk to you. Um, we'll provide you all the information we can. You know, anybody that we can talk to and educate on what we do and why we do it becomes our advocate. 
and um, becomes a, a friend to public works and someone who can share accurate information with their friends and neighbors. So give us a call, shoot us an email, and, and we're more than happy to provide any information. Absolutely. Sounds awesome. Thank you so much. And um, we appreciate your time today and we'll see you next time. Great. Looking forward to it. And thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, again, great, uh, great uh, to have us on this month. We're, we really appreciate all you're doing for us and getting the word out here from Glen County. Uh, I was glad that you were able to talk to uh, both Danny Smith from Public Works and uh, Andy Lanza from uh, Emergency Management to kind of get the behind the scenes, all the stuff that goes into, you know, managing and preparing for storms. So that's uh, that's a that's a big part of what we do that a lot of people just don't see. And then also, don't forget about uh, Friday night hoops. Uh, every Friday night in the summer, uh, four in uh, June, and then three in July. It's going to be a lot of fun for uh, for our community kids. Great. Perfect. We're thrilled for all this information and um, we'll see you again next time. See you next month. Okay. Bye. Bye.